Hello you multi moldy middle class magicians and thank you to Pulsar 12C for that malt mention. I'm Ralphie in the Bothy somewhere in the middle of the Irish Sea with a review for you. It's an independent bottling of a whiskey and this is Ralphie Review 927. My goodness. Ralphie Review 1000 is almost on the horizon. This is part of a small series of four bottlings which are independent bottles. Right. Independent bottles are from independent bottlers. The independent bottlers, most of the time, not always, do not own a distillery themselves, but buy from either distilleries directly or from a large brokerage where they get an assortment of different casks of different single malts and other spirits and uh, they bring them on and they mature them under their own terms and conditions, some of which are really quite strict and you notice that in the results and others maybe less so, uh, but it does vary. Independent bottling quality varies like official bottling quality varies and the best way to sift out the best from the rest is to acquire the knowledge which is why you're here to get a little bit of malt knowledge. Now this is a bottle of Mortlach. Have a look at that. That is natural colour. I shall get my steampunker out. What a fantastic old-fashioned device this is. I bought it on eBay many years ago. I just like the look of it. I don't even know what magnification it is. All I do know is it magnifies and that's all I care about. Every now and again, <laughs> I may as well tell you this, I have to tighten up the nuts and bolts that hold the frame together. But that's fine because I've got to do it with my spectacles as well, so I'm used to it. This is a bottling from First Editions. It was called The First Editions, which is part of the Hunter Lang Independent Bottlers. So if you don't actually recognise this label, let me just reassure you, you're not alone. This is an independent bottling within an independent bottlers and it's not the usual bottles that this independent bottler bottles. The reason I think this situation exists is just simply to give the bottler a bit more diversity on the labelings that they put out there and also if they have a few eccentric casks which are decent enough but a little bit unconventional to put it my early times they'll bottle it under a less well-known brand to get the sales knowing that people won't associate it with the Hunter Lang brand and uh, this is distributed because there's a little label on the back of the bottle to confirm this. This is distributed within Europe. More specific information, it is a Mortlach, I did mention that. Distilled in 2010, bottled in 2021. Some people would assume that is 11 years old, 2010 to 2021. But you cannot jump to conclusions. It's always better to knock a year off. In this occasion, it is 10 years old because they actually state it on the label. And um, they also say bottled at cask strength, non chill filtered, non coloured at 57.5%. So here we have a great big bruiser strength weight of a single malt, of a signature which is pretty heavy duty. Mortlach is really up there with Springbank and Edredur in many respects as regard the savoury nature of the flavour profile which has also more recently been described quite rightly as more of a dirty profile. Not dirty as in unclean but dirty as in not purified, accessible, fruity, 
easy going. And I have to say at this point, I think there's an awful lot of distilleries out there just starting up that are playing it too safe with what they're producing. They're making their whiskey too clean, their cuts are too precise, and they are sanitising the signature of their brand and losing its identity. Thought I'd share that with you. It's a bit of a problem for Mortlach in its official bottling guise. For a while, uh, Diageo, who owned Mortlach Distillery, excuse, excuse me a second, a yen are out, right, stay out, cats. They, 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 they lie in wait for me to come to the bothy. As soon as I'm recording, they're sticking their head through trying to distract me. Through the door. Out. Treats later. Yeah. Where was I? <laughs> More like. Official bottlings. They had a period where they were bottling in 50 centilitre bottles. Uh, that's a no-no in my book. You will notice I never, very, 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 very rarely review 50 centilitre bottlings for a very simple reason. In my opinion, they are short change. It's creating an illusion. Oh, you're getting a bottle of whiskey and it actually looks reasonably priced. But if it was a 70 centilitre bottle, it would be a bit overpriced because it's a 50 centilitre bottle. You're simply getting less whiskey. I don't like it. It comes up across to me as a bit tricksy, but Diageo did that with the Mortlach brand and it really put me off. So I, I was went to have a look at what the independent bottlers had, like Signatory, Caden Heads, a few Gordon McPhails and uh, Hunter Lang. And every now and again, you come up with some a really interesting bottle. Now, I'm going to tell you, I've not actually tasted this. You may notice that the top is still sealed. And there's a reason for that. I want this to be an independent bottling that I'm reviewing for you based on first contact. So here goes. We're gonna take the seal off and get stuck into this without any further delay. But typical of a Ralphie review, I do like the build up because it gives me opportunity to provide further information to help you make your purchasing decisions. Cock time, are you? Shh, shh. Oh, oh. Good neck, Phil. Most bottles are filled into the neck the exact volume of alcohol being 70 centilitres is up to a certain neck fill and on the bottom of the bottle it's got, it has a wee measurement in millimetres in this occasion it's 20 centilitres in the bottle. I'm going to leave the cork off now, let it aerate a wee bit. When I open bottles for the first time, particularly at cask strength, particularly when they're younger, they need to breathe and unwind from their hibernation in there. And of course this, when you first have a first pour, more or less disregard the experience in your senses because the whisky hasn't had time, un time to unwind but you will still get a first impression. But don't read too much into that first impression. Slow down, take your time, and you'll enjoy it more. This is quite aromatic and confectionery. They call Mortlach the Beast of Dufftown because of its savoury notes. 
It's not a whisky for beginners, I would not advise it. If you're beginning, stick to Glenlivet and Glenfiddich, you can't go wrong. Mortlach is one of these single malt profiles that you graduate to over time and then you really enjoy it. Some people get it immediately, but other folk are, just don't like it at all. It's one of these love it or loathe it, loathe it whiskies. It's like, like, it's like um, Laphroaig, exactly the same style. I quite enjoy it. Bourbon cask, definitely. Fresh bourbon cask, because there's plenty of vanilla going on here. Barley sugar. What's a barley sugar? And soft sultanas, quite ripe sultanas. First taste. Fiery. Palatable but fiery. Serious alcoholic nip. And yeah, you will notice as the taste dissipates. See that tingling you get in the centre of your tongue? That little pins and needles tingle. That is your sense of taste being anaesthetised by ethanol. It's, a, it's as simple as that. I don't really start to enjoy these types of whiskies until after I've been there were two teaspoons, that's 10 millilitres. I don't really start to enjoy them until after the bottle's been open for about a month. Unlike a bottle of Glenlivet, which you uncork and it's ready to pour and go. With these more obscure independent bottlings, which I'm making you aware of so you know about them, you will find it quite, conf not just confusing, but your first sensation will probably be, Ugh, what on earth is this? And automatically you'll put the cork back on it and put it away for another month. And that's absolutely the right thing to do because in between your first taste and your second and your third and your fourth taste, over time, your senses have time, your sense of smell and particularly sense of taste has time to acclimatise to the flavour range, the sensation range within these types of whisky, these big cask strength whiskies. And sure, official bottlings can be cask strength. And if you go to the distillery, you may get single cask. But even then, they're quite careful to make them less challenging. They'll be good whiskies, but they won't necessarily be particularly exciting whiskies. The whis whiskies, even at cast strength, after two or three tastes, you're really getting used to it. This is a little bit different. Adding the water brings out fresh fruit, more aromatic, a little bit of confectionery, lozengy type, pastel type flavours. Uh, Rose Otto, uh, slight mild ginger note on the taste. Sweeter. Oh, punchy. Wood savoury. Baked banana, baked apples. Slight wood smoke. Sourness, a distinct sourness that's got a little bit of bitterness in with it. So I'll add a little, little bit more water, and this is probably I'm adding more water to the first glass than I would to the second, third, and fourth because what I'm doing is just cutting down the alcohol to get access to the basic flavour flavor profile so I have a point of reference when I come for when I come back to this whisky later on. This whisky, I kid you not, will probably last me five years. Five years. I'll come to it occasionally in my little Mortlach corner. It's not a very big corner, I've just got about half a dozen bottles. And um, they're quite an eclectic mi mix. And um, I'll enjoy it. I'll probably end up, after the first or second modest glass, I'll start blending them up. See if I can create my own perfect fusion mortlach. Because it's the same thing we can do. 
because we've got more colour in the palette when we have the independent bottlings in our stash as well as the official bottlings. There you go. So final taste before I deliver a malt mark. Little bit of scotch mist appearing in there. Quite, can you see that? I think you can. I'm focusing in the focus box, so it should work. Enjoying this already. The last bottle I got of this was like an old Bowmore. It had a very Parma Violets flavour that took about three months to dissipate and turned it into a beautiful whisky. Really enjoyed it. Still got some. Funnily enough, it reminds me of early bottling, bottlings of Ben Romach, when Ben Romach was more sensation heavy. Really interesting malt, because you're getting Mortlach young, and Mortlach, it'll suit any cask, but every cask could be a disaster, if you know what I mean. But in this case, a really good match with a fresh, Modest bourbon cask, nothing too heavy in terms of flavour. The classic vanilla, slight honey thing going on, which suits the Mortlach. It brings down and tones down its stridency as a, as a spirit at an earlier age. Works really well as an old whisky, does Mortlach. You know, 30 years plus. Some interesting mezcal notes in there. This is a first impression. It's quite gingery, spicy and feisty. Almost a touch of curry, seriously, on the finish. But, and there's kind of sour, sour herbs in there. Sage um, and, and bay leaf. Yeah, there's that kind of bay leaf, kind of sage strokes mint fusion thing and sort of menthol it's an odd one proceed with caution but if you have experience and you know how to work the bottle you're going to be fine 87 out of 100 and that's an integrity malt mark and furthermore bear in mind this malt mark is for first acquaintance so after about a month, it could be 88 or 89. And there you have it. And before my hiccups start kicking in, <laughs> I shall say cheery bye. Pop back again for my 927 extras. Because if you do, you'll be rewarded with more insights into selecting independent bottlings at auction because this is becoming a more interesting option these days. And also I will reintroduce the, the first independent bottling you should ever start with. The one that will probably educate you the most and will be the most unique to you and the one you will always be able to afford. Right, I've got you intrigued now. Um, so you have to join me to find out my next review. I'm Ralphie from The Bothy. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe if you haven't. Click the likey button. And if you want extra stuff and extra content, why don't you subscribe to me in Patreon? Ralphie at Patreon. R-A-L-F-Y. I'm Ralphie from The Bothy. And see you soon.